Okay. So, hello everyone. How are you? Hello. 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 Welcome to the Be Well to the Be Well Zoom meeting. Uh, I say meeting because it's an interactive space. Okay. So we have the guest guest speaker, we have the host, and we have the participants all coming together to connect and to contribute to business know-how and mental well-being, to improve ourselves and to improve our businesses and to help improve the world, let's say. Let's look for a big uh, goal, why not? So my name is Gary, Gary Judge. Uh, I work and live in Italy. I work as a business strategy coach. Uh, my clients come to me um, because they are Italian mainly and they want to be international managers and international entrepreneurs. So they need communication skills, they need uh, personal skills, like emotional intelligence, how to manage themselves, how to manage their staff. So I help them with that, with professional uh, know-how, and also to, to increase their global network. That's what I do with them. So when they come to me, that's what they need, and that's what I provide. Okay, so today's uh, webinar, well, or today's, sorry, meeting, our meeting is called Navigating Tranquility, Helping High Achieving Introverts Minimize Overwhelm and Create a Life with More Purpose. Our guest speaker, topic facilitator, co-host is Leonor Cavallo, Carvallo, sorry, because otherwise Cavallo is in, in Italian as horse, Carvallo, <laughs> I don't want to make that mistake, sorry. Um, so I can give you a little bit of information about her, but then she, uh, that she'll introduce herself. Um, in 2018, she made a promise to herself. She said, now it's time for me to start living my life on my terms, to live the life I want to live in 2018. Since then, that was what, six years ago? Yes. Around. Five, six years ago. Since then, if it hasn't been updated, she has invested in different courses of applied psychology and somatic therapy. She's become a mother. Congratulations. She has switched career paths. She started her own business and she has coached people from all around the world. So using a combination of life coaching, hypnotherapy, somatic techniques and NLP, she helps high achieving introverts to live with less overwhelm and create a life with more purpose. So it's great having you here, Leonor. Uh, perhaps you could just tell us a little bit about what you do and um, before we go into the, into the topic. Yeah, so thank you for inviting me. So as uh, Gary said, I, I help high achieving introverts with coaching, hypnotherapy, and in general, people come to me because they are either on the verge of burnout or they are already burned out. So we live in a world built for extroverts that you need to be outgoing, out uh, showing up. And especially if you are a business owner, it's very important that you are proactive, outgoing, networking, putting yourself out there. But but that's some but if you are an introvert that's you cannot sustain that and people come to me because they need help navigating this extrovert world being an introvert and first i would like to ask do we have any introverts in the room or at least that think they are introvert <laughs> yes and do you know the difference between introversion and shyness Do we know the, the, the introvert the, in Chinese? Sh shyness. When a person is shy. I, I, shyness, sorry. Shyness. shyness. Because it's often misunderstood that uh, introversion means that you're shy, that you're like um, kind of, uh, that you don't interact with people, that you are socially awkward, but they are different things. So you can be introvert, <laughs> Exactly. I'm also uh, the, the Debbie. I'm introvert, but I'm not shy. I have no problem with public speaking. I have no problem with talking with people and going out there, but I need my own time. Introversion is that 
you need time by yourself to recharge because you get drained by social interactions. So imagine if you are a business owner and you need to go network, you need to go meet people, you need to put yourself out there to sell your business. Social media also like can be draining to be constantly interacting with people on social media. So if you are introvert and um, like, and you don't recharge, then you'll get drained out of energy. And you do that for a long time and you get overwhelmed. Then you do a bit more, you get to eventually into burnout because you completely, you drain yourself out. You know the word burnout? I think it, it, it's, it's now become part of our vocabulary, but um, years ago when I had a breakdown or I had these migraine headaches that actually put me in bed all day long, I would, I would you know, I'd stay, I couldn't, I, I had to close myself in a dark room. It wasn't a burnout. Um, I always think, I always thought myself as an introvert because I'm a shy person or is that, um, but I'm an entrepreneur. Yes. So it's often confused, like uh, shyness in introversion. So do you like when you are in social environments, do you get energized there or do you need, do you feel the need of after that be, spending time on, by yourself? I want to escape. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, shyness, for example, when you're shy, you kind of, you want to connect with people, but you just don't know how to do it you feel um, fear of judgment by other people you have your shyness comes from lack of confidence so that's why an introversion comes from uh, the need to be alone to recharge your social battery so you are more reserved as well as an introvert but you have no problems with talking with other people but if you're shy, we can be shy and introvert. You can be both. You can also be extrovert and shy. Oh. <laughs> so, because there yeah. are different things. So, Leonor, if I understand this correctly, if you get energized, if you are um, with people, that means that you're more extroverted. And if you uh, recharge um, when you have your alone time, that means that you're more introverted. Yes, and it's like a spectrum, so there are different levels, and you can have a bit of both as well, uh, and that's called ambivert, but there is like a spectrum, it's not like either this or that. What, what's, that, that, what's that name you said? Ambivert. You described me pretty well. Ambivert? Ambivert, so you, when you have both. <laughs> okay. So introvert and extrovert, ambivert. Yes, you have traits of both. Like some days you are more introvert, some days you are more extrovert. Hmm. Yes. And different and, situations too, at least from what I've experienced. Yes, yes, yes. Depending on where you, like with what type of people you are, or like uh, if it's like business, family, it, it depends as well. And for example, for females that have the menstrual cycle, I've noticed a pattern that clients have told me that depending on the phase of the menstrual cycle, the ones that are ambivert, they are more introverted or more extroverted as well. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, so, so what kind of strengths do, does an introvert have um, over an extrovert or vice versa? Um, in general, introverts, they think more before they act. They don't act so much on impulse. Mm. And it means that, for example, when they are talking, they think more about what they say, which can be <clears throat> good. For This is a good thing. They, are, they have a very rich inner world because they spend time <laughs> with themselves. So those, I think, are very, like, they are big strengths like that they think before doing something yeah my wife is an introvert and one of the things that she has is a deep caring for other people she may not always say that but she always does and so you know an introvert won't necessarily necessarily highlight their good values because they're 
think it might be bragging or something like that, but they will care about other people very well. Yes. In general, the introverts are more reserved. Yes. They, uh, what I've noticed uh, about being reserved as an introvert is it can really quickly turn to passive aggressiveness because for me personally, I won't mm. speak up when something is bothering me because I feel I would rather want to uh, keep things calm and um, let's not have any friction. So let's rather keep quiet. And um, before you know it, you've turned passive aggressive. Um, is that something mm -hmm. that you've come across or that you've noticed in other clients yes and that also it's something that i actually plan to mention here is that the introvert needs to like go a bit out of the comfort zone because and like speak up this is part of the internal work you need to do and also there is something i found in my clients in particular is that um there is there is a lot of people pleasing so it's hard to say no. It's hard to put boundaries. So here is where you need to like stretch, do like the comfort zone stretching and like work on yourself because this will influence a lot the quality of our life, how overwhelmed you will feel. Because if you're constantly giving up to other people and not saying no, not putting your boundaries, you're going to drain your energy. Mm -hmm. Uh, what, what about uh, when you start a business, Leonardo? I was just reflecting on when I started my business 25 years ago, when I didn't know anything on how to run a business or didn't know how to manage people, didn't know how to manage myself, and I was obviously less confident. And I, is that like an, me being going through an introverted uh, phase, then becoming an extrovert? Is, is, does, does that change? Or what, I mean, how are those... So I haven't really, like, I've been researching a bit and I haven't encountered anywhere that you can actually change to become extrovert. It's like, normally it's something that you have, but you can, it's like, you can challenge yourself enough so that certain things that are naturally uncomfortable for you, like saying no, setting boundaries, speaking up, if you challenge yourself enough, then they will become more comfortable. So you will always have in you this need of uh, being by yourself, of having spending a long time to recharge, but that doesn't mean that you cannot speak up. That doesn't mean that you cannot say no. You just need to, to uh, practice it enough, to do it enough times, to test yourself, to go out of your comfort zone and do it. De Debbie's got a hand up. Debbie, you got a question? Yeah. Um, Lana, I'm, I'm curious, does that mean that we can change from being an introvert to becoming an extrovert? Is it possible to change? I haven't read anything that you can change. Okay. Like, so because the introversion, it means that um, you can change shyness. And I think that's yeah. what it means. So you can change the shyness, you can work on yourself to change. Introversion, extroversion is like just how you charge your social and emotional battery. But you but just, I'm asking this because you said we can stretch our boundaries. Yes, and said, that- and, and if we stretch our boundaries, there, at some point in time, do we become an extrovert because we've crossed- that? I haven't encountered anything, for example, in literature or anything that I've been like reading that says it, but you can like um, stretch your boundaries enough that you can spend more time with other people, that you don't need to be so secluded, like so by yourself but you will always need your me time. And it's very important for you to schedule me time if you don't have opportunity, if you have a very busy life, if you have family responsibilities, work responsibilities, to have, even if it's like 30 minutes a day, something to have time to recharge and to do something for yourself. David, you got a question? Yeah, I'm gonna go back to my wife again. As shy as she is, and she's not, someone that challenges somebody else when I get her to meet new people they love her and she makes really good tight friends and me I know Gary understands that and, uh, some others understand I, I grew up in a fairly wealthy family and I was very shy and the reason I was shy is because I always thought 
like friends were taking advantage of money. And I wasn't going to allow that to happen. So I kind of shelled myself in. And I shelled myself out when I went to the Air Force. And now I'm more of an extrovert than an introvert, but I still have the introvert in me because I don't want people to take advantage of me at the same time. So I've kind of got both mixed in. So what's, what's the question? Uh, David, you got a question there? Well, I, I was just, with what she was just saying was uh, uh, my wife is just like what she was just talking about. Right. And, try, and, try, and trying to break out. She doesn't even try to break out. It just so happens whenever she does have the luxury of meeting people, they love her to death. But, uh, you know, that helps out making friends because if you don't have a lot of friends, you don't have a lot of people to talk to about things. And so, you know, now she gets to gather up a few friends because, you know, they like her and she knows they like her. And so she kind of opens up to them. I, I got a reflection just as you're talking there, David, about um, uh, extroverts attracted to introverts because introverts give them the space space to be extroverts. <laughs> Maybe that's why I married her. Who knows? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> it, 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 was just, it was just something came across as we were talking. I just, Eleanor, has that ever come across with your with your clients or with your studies? Like, you know. Well, that, that's very true because when I was dating, I didn't date very much. But when I was dating, I was always going to open the door, car door for her and everything, let her get in, get out. But at the time, and this is in the 70s, oh, I can get the door myself. Well, guess who never got asked out for another date? <laughs> you know? So, uh, you know, I maybe I was looking for an introvert. I don't know. But I like a woman who's going to be a woman. Let's 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 see. Um, oh, hi, Stephen. Uh, you, you, should, can we get Leon, Leon just to ask that? Maybe just uh, give us some light on that that point of mine, and then we can bring Stephen. Yes, there might be an issue with the introvert extrovert relationship. Is that the extrovert will not understand the introvert need for to be alone? So it's it works better if both people are introvert or at, le at least have introverted characteristics. Like if it's ambivert, but introverted characteristic is because the extrovert will never understand like, why do you have to stay at home by yourself? I want to go out, I want to go party. Why do you have to stay at home by yourself? So this might be yeah. like an issue, especially in the early days, of, like when people are younger and start dating, like maybe later on in life, not so much. But this, there is like like a clash here between things. So, yeah. Stephen, uh, I love that answer, and that's something. That there's a a very well known psychologist that talks about this. That you know differences don't attract when it comes to extroversion and introversion. Because you know I have a friend that's an extrovert, and his wife is a very strong introvert. And it's like it's always a battle over over who they invite over to the house, right? And he's like, well, let's let's. Let's have a small party. Let's invite twenty you now. And she's like, she, like the, the the panic just spreads across her face. And then it's like, well, how many can I invite? And she's, and her answer, you know, he goes, he worked all the way down to one, and and he looked at her. He goes, what what number will you be comfortable with? And he she goes, none. <laughs> so it's this it's this constant battle, and it's like it's realizing that. Um, that's his joy of having people around and that's her joy of having no one around. And it's like, it causes anxiety if it's, if it's different. So um, my question to you was this on this realm of self-awareness. So where does self-awareness play a role in just having a better human experience, you know, and also around your, around your, you know, big five trait of, of extroversion, introvertness, introvertness. Um, so when you are like aware that you are introvert first, like if you understand that you are introvert, you can then plan your day, you can plan your life so that you actually nurture this side of you so that you take time for yourself because the world is built for extroverts. <laughs> so like, if, especially if you are a business owner, like you need to be out there. 
You need to show up, even in social media. You need to be constant, consistently showing up, putting yourself out there. And if you are an introvert, being constantly surrounded with people, uh, it will drain you out. You will not have energy to keep on going. So once you become aware that you have these traits, uh, just make sure that you address this part of you, that you nurture this part of you so that you can keep on going because otherwise the battery is going to end. Yeah. As I, as I listen to you, there are so many things coming in because now we're much more wiser. We have more tools. We have more understanding of, us, of ourselves. And years ago, when I was going through all sorts of uh, difficulties in myself and managing uh, 25, 30 people, I never knew all of this. And I was just wondering what, and I was always in difficulty because maybe there are things that I that now I hear you talking about is, is I am an introvert, but I've had to be an extrovert. And so how does that play with an entrepreneur who's an introvert, but find, finds himself or herself having to be, to play the extrovert? Like, uh, you like when you are like in a professional setting, if you need to be like ex more extrovert, so like uh, show up and talk and be a leader, yeah. do that. But then when you come home, make sure that you recharge. When you're not working, make sure that on your private time, you recharge your battery somehow. Kind of the secret is to try to find the balance here. Because if you're constantly doing things that are draining your energy and you don't take care of yourself, you don't recharge, you're going to get yourself into troubles. Yeah, yeah. Debbie's got a question. Wait a minute, David. De Debbie, and then we'll go. To yeah, thanks. Um, I, I'm wondering, Lynn, uh, building up on what David said and what Stephen was asking, <laughs> is it possible for an extrovert to help an introvert move out of that shell that that you know their 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 own little world is is there any way because i you know i i actually said i tend to think of myself more like an ambivert and because i'm not shy i go out to networking events i talk i do public speaking i've taught public speaking i i'm eager to meet new people and stuff but i love to go back home and be by myself you know so that's why I say I'm an ambivert. And if there's, you know, too much going on, it just kind of overwhelms me sometimes. So, but my husband is definitely an introvert. He's someone who's very socially clumsy. I mean, I would never say this where he could hear me, but. Um, <laughs> but close the door. <laughs> <laughs> he's not here right now. But, but I think of him as being socially clumsy sometimes. And, um, but he's also very thrilled when he does something in, in public where he gets recognition. Oh, they talk to me or they ask my opinion or something like that. He's like, um, He's a totally different type of, than I am. I don't mind, you know. I, oh, I, you know, I mess up something. I say, oh, I'm sorry, I screwed that up. You know, I got the wrong name or something, and I make a joke and I move on. But he can't do that. Is there any way that someone that is an extrovert or like myself, maybe I am an extrovert and not an ambivert. I don't know. But if someone like that can help an introvert, oh my God, I just thought of this. This is this is being recorded, so I'll have to tell him he can't watch this. <laughs> I'm going, to send him, I'm going to send him a copy, Debbie. I'm going to send him a copy. Like uh, the extrovert person can help the introvert in a way just to go out of the comfort zone. Like especially, for example, using your example with your husband. Since your husband trusts you and he feels safe with you, like you can be like, you can help him put going with him to places or like making him be more social like uh, just on this uh, expanding of the comfort zone like going out of the comfort zone but it the introvert needs to be willing to do it because if when somebody doesn't want to do it then it's going to that's going to have resistance I, uh, just one last thing that <clears throat> a thought that comes to this does it have to do with confidence with self-confidence uh, shyness when a person is shy is more related with the uh, self-confidence okay. because introversion and shyness are different 
So shyness is like you can work you can work like work yourself out of shyness by doing personal development work, self awareness therapy. But introversion, it's not really. It's how you recharge. Uh, you said that earlier. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, David. You got a you had a question. You said about it. Yeah, but uh, I guess my introvert got a hold of me because I forgot what it was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a question for you, Leonardo, uh, uh, about introverts being employed in companies, in teams. How do we include the introverts? Uh, because here, at, at, at my business, I, I've, I've taken on people who are introverts, and it's quite scary because, you know, as as a, as a the owner, I was demanding things from people like speak up when we have meetings and they don't speak up or take initiatives and they don't take initiatives and uh, and so how do we include introverts into the team into uh, into an organization? Mm. What kind of strategies can we first use? like kind of it depends a bit. It, now that you said that there is a, a client of mine that came to, came to mind so it depends why they are not speaking up it might not necessarily be that they are not speaking up because they are introverts no it might be that they feel insecure that they lack confidence to speak up uh, because so I just I just came a client to mind that she's an introvert and she's like part of a team and she was afraid to speak up in meetings and that was creating her to hate her job because she felt that everybody was judging her. She felt that uh, people didn't like her work. And then we did some work on her, on herself, on her confidence. And actually she started to speak up and now she loves her job again. Because what was causing her not to speak up, it was not the introversion, but it was what the story she was telling herself, the fantasy she was creating in her own on head so it might not necessarily be because of introversion and that they are not speaking up first is like try to understand why they are not speaking up and something that for example helps introverts is like to speak is when they feel comfortable um like if they have been working with you for long enough that they can they feel safe and that they can trust then they are more likely to speak they might take them longer to speak up. Like if it's a new hire, it might take him, that person longer to start speaking up in meetings than somebody that has been working for you. It's like they are kind of testing the terrain before they are they start to speak. Yeah. Yeah, but my, my, my wife, she was really closed in for a while and I convinced her to take a different job. And... Uh, she's gotten to where she's starting to make suggestions at that job and doing other things. So she's opening up quite a bit. And because they're saying, oh, that's a good idea. I wish I thought of that. And so in the work in the workspace, it's good to give people opportunities so that they can prove to themselves what they can do as well. But, but if the introverts don't step up, David, how does- What was that again? So if, if the introvert doesn't step forward or doesn't step up to, you know, of course, we want to give everyone an opportunity in an organization. There's no yeah. discrimination, extroverts, introverts. But the question, my question would be here, if the introvert doesn't show themselves, how can they be given opportunities? What, what, what I did, I had 78 designers working for me. And so some of them were introverts, some of them had other issues, some were extroverts. But what you do is you have to try to give those employees an understanding how well they are accepted given the way they are. And one of the things I used to do is do puns. I, I'm a, I've got a very weird sense of humor, but I would do puns and they were all like, uh, Deer caught in the headlights had no idea what I was talking about, and I explained to them it was just a different way to think, be create creative, and everything like that. And so after they figured out I wasn't going anywhere, they started doing puns on me, and they were really crude at first, not quite right, and they kept getting better and better and better. And finally, oh, it was probably several months later, 
the company's global corporate newsletter had an article in my group and it was talking about their greatly improved design creativity. And when they read that article, you could just see their heads go, boom, explode with pride. And that made a big jump in not only the way they work, but the way they felt. Uh, they felt more appreciated and things like that. It, it was a huge, huge difference. So, so are you saying, I mean, Leonard, is there, is there some sort of training? Do you think companies should be actually implementing any training around this? I mean, not excluding, like just saying introverts and extroverts, but just doing training, company training around this phenomenon or not? To be honest, I don't know because it's kind of... I don't it because it's really like it's very individual depending on the person. There is like not uh, one way or two ways of dealing with an introvert because they do need time before they start kind of speaking up and they need to feel like comfortable. And the it's kind of it's more to understand why they are not speaking up. Like I mentioned, it might not necessarily be because of introversion. So one yeah. thing, for example, is if they do something good, say it that, okay, this is very good. Kind of so that they start to feel safe enough to speak. Because if they don't feel safe enough, if they don't feel comfortable, they will not speak. That's true. Elaine, I'm, Elaine's I'm got a not... question. David, wait a minute. Elaine's got a question. One, one Sorry. All right. Leonor, I was just wondering if there is a correlation uh, between introverts and the stories that they are telling themselves. Um, because it, if I listen to you speak, it seems like um, things can quickly escalate in their own minds, going yes. from bad <laughs> to worse real quickly, and the stories that they're telling themselves about what's really going on. Um, and the reality of what's actually going on. Yes, it's uh, because the inner world is so rich, like they spend, there is like spending so much time in their own thoughts that uh, it can escalate to that. <laughs> like the stories, and then you start to believe the stories, and then you start acting out on the stories more than with an extrovert person that is more likely to go seek external validation and like talking with people, discussing ideas. And here you kind of deal with everything yourself. Yeah. So, and, and that means it's going to make it harder and more difficult to actually stand up and speak up and say what it is that you want to say. Yes, yes. And so, so when you go for a, a, a oh, Debbie, you got a question or shall I go ahead with mine? You me? De uh, Debbie? We... Uh, oh, sorry, Debbie, I was okay. on mute. Um, I had a question, um, Leonor. Is there a way that you can tell if someone is an introvert or an extrovert that you're just meeting or someone that you're working with or or is there a way you can differentiate is it shyness that they're that they're showing exhibiting or is this actually someone who is an introvert and 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 to continue on that question how would i act when i when i've got an idea of what they are you know how what would be the best way for me to build rapport and connection with them it's hard like just someone that you just met it might be hard mm -hmm. because we don't know if it's shyness that is there because a person might be very outgoing talkative but still be introvert mm -hmm. so if this is something that you need some time to with that person to understand and most likely that person will tell it yourself or it's herself or himself because people know it unless they don't understand the difference between shyness and introversion but yes it's like i think on a first encounter is very hard unless you see that somebody is the center of attention in the party that is like or in the meeting that is like calling attention and it's there in the center with surrounded with people might be a sign that is um, an extrovert while the introverts will pretend will be better in smaller groups that might be the one telling sign but like i said 
because of the shyness, it might be tricky at first if you're having a one-on-one -on -one meeting with somebody. But maybe in a bigger group setting, you can see like how they are interacting, like with a smaller group, or are they there talk loud, talking in the middle? Then yes. Mm -hmm. oh. Is there any body language that is associated with introverts and extroverts? Well, like, you know, without speaking, without just looking at people, and they, they, can you sort of say, well, this person could be... Maybe looking more to the floor, not uh, kind of being a bit more closed kind of kind of with a protective uh, kind of posture but then again it might also be shyness <laughs> so I've, I've got several friends that are introverts and uh one of the one of the things that i that they talk about is like if they're in a group setting they feel isolated and they feel under pressure and so if you could have like a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them where it brings it back down to a small group setting even if there's other people around that makes a big difference and you'll notice like if you've got an introvert they'll talk about energy right and, uh, so i'm an introvert um if i'm squeezed if i'm under pressure if i'm tense i will i will go off on my own you know that's how i recharge uh, you know if i'm really under a lot of stress you'll find me by myself so that's i think that's the, the key answer and um you know a lot of times they're i think they're 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 deep thinkers and that they're more reserved and so you've got all of those different skills around but you know, it's it's a beautiful. The introverts are really quite beautiful people because they are they're they're seeking authenticity. So I, everything, every conversation I've had, an introvert is uncomfortable when you force on them when you're trying to project that you're important or or significant. They don't they don't care about that. It causes them distress. What they want is they want authentic connections with other people. And so, can you reflect on that, Leonor? Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yes, I agree with that. That like it's like this having this rich inner world, uh, kind of, and with, with this energy, like you will often see that they like talk about like I feel drained out when I'm with other people. I really need to go home and rest. I like I'm the first one to leave, kind of situation. Yes, and in terms of authenticity, I do agree that with that, and I think that's one of the reasons why people come to me it's because they have been most of their life putting a mask pretending to be something that they are not pretending to be extroverted when they are not and you can only keep it up for until a certain point until it collapses so yes there is like kind of this need to to be authentic with who you are with your needs with your like with what, the kind of life that you want to build that's why like i say that i help them to go from overwhelmed to come build a life with more purpose connect with who you are because you have like they have been conditioned like i remember i'm an introvert myself and just giving my example as a child I used to be called like, oh, you're just such an introvert. And uh, they would call me like, uh, how, how can I translate it to English? This person, the hermit from the forest. <laughs> that I, live, I just want to be alone in the forest by myself. I don't want to socialize. So I associated this with being very negative. And all my life, I thought this, like I have, there is something wrong with me. Like I, like, like I'm not normal because I have like I'm a forest <laughs> hermit, a forest troll. Uh, so it's kind of because most of us we have been conditioned to think that being like this is wrong because we are not out there, we are not outgoing, we are not wanting to be social all the time, and this creates a conflict. So it's kind of, it's finding the way back to who you are. But that, I think that's the journey of life for most of us or for all of us is to connect with who we really are. We've got some questions here. Uh, David, go on, go with your question first. David, you got a question for Ellen? Um, yeah, <laughs> what you just said, something you said earlier made me think too. Uh, <laughs> Mike, I was 
very fortunate. The Air Force gave me leadership training and <clears throat> stuff like that. And one of the things they found during the Vietnam War is that the wax, the Women's Air Corps, uh, taking care of nursing and everything like that, they recovered a whole lot faster than the male soldiers. <clears throat> and what they found out is under the stress of all the disaster they saw, the bodies and everything like that, they would get a break and they would go outside and cry their eyes out. So one of my courses in my leadership training was learning how to cry so that you can be more compassionate, so you can understand people better. And that gets back to the servant leadership part, too, of understanding your people better. And Harvard Business Re Review did an article uh, late 2011 about servant leadership. And they mentioned that point. I don't think it's changed much. Only about 2% of the uh, management population know what servant leadership is. But the big part of being a servant leader is understanding your people, being compassionate, and caring more about them than you do yourself. And I know that's so, kind of a weird so are situation you, are you, to me. David, just to connect, mm -hmm. us, are, we, are we talking about like servant leadership, uh, having introverted skills? Are, is that what you're saying? <laughs> connect up to yes. Topic? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Okay. So yeah. how, they're not, how is that? Um, crying and uh, and Steve is laughing, <laughs> introverts and extroverts connected up there. Can you connect that up? Uh, uh, go ahead. Yes, David, you were going to say something? No, uh, go ahead. I was just trying to put a thought together. I guess introverts tend because they spend some time more some most of the time by in like by themselves and they have rich inner world they are more connected with emotions so they tend to experience emotions a bit deeper than the extroverts but it's not necessarily to this is more i think related with being highly sensitive person like uh, feeling the feeling other people's emotions feeling the emotions in the room and Based on what I've experienced, I don't know like literature on this, but introverts tend to have more this characteristic of being high sensitive. So to feel more to feel stronger emotions than extroverts. Yeah. Elena, uh, Elaine, sorry, Elaine, yeah, sorry, I was just I was uh, on a thought when uh, Leonor explained about um that conflict that you experience as, as a child and being introverted. Um, and that you think that there's something wrong with you and then you get to a place where you self-reflect and you find out but this is me and it's okay to be an introvert and you kind of like you kind of like kind of like being an introvert and you don't care so much about what other people think anymore and then you start your own business and now you need to develop again into the world but this time you're more authentic because you know who you are and you have to do things differently in a more extroverted way so um, any thoughts on that? Any tips on that on how to navigate into this new world of becoming a business owner when you've just become very comfortable with being an introvert? Like I, For me, like I can tell a bit about my personal journey. So I challenged myself a lot before I started my own business. So in my previous role, every time I had an opportunity to, pub to do public speaking, to go teach, to do something, I would take it. To organize an event, I would go and do it. I put myself out there, I test it, and then I start loving it. <laughs> so when I moved into the business to have my own business, I already had this part that I was comfortable with public speaking. I was comfortable with like being with other people. And that also, like I already knew, I, I understood that I was an introvert in my previous role, like when I started, and like I understood this difference between introvert and extrovert. And so like now it's easier, but I still struggle, for example, with social media, <laughs> that uh, this interacting in social media with people, because I see a lot of people, for example, leaving comments that they are kind of, uh, there is no substance in it just for the sake of it. And this is where my introvert uh, 
kind of struggles because for me to comment on something, it really needs to be something that I care about and something that resonates with me. That's why I re I'm really bad at this interacting in social media. <laughs> so my suggestion is like, put yourself out there, like steps out of the comfort zone, like baby steps, like know what you want, have a clear vision of like, I want to have my business. I want to do this, know what you want. And like put, little by little, put yourself out there, like, stretch your comfort zone until it becomes a new comfort thanks that's a, that's good gonna, advice maybe has got a question here let's, let's yeah. take this um um i'm i'm aware of the time so i wanted to ask this question before we got before we went, you went away leonor and and that's just, do you have any advice that you would give coaches or or mentors that are working with you know those high achieving introverts and uh, that would help them to thrive i mean is there any advice or, or guidance you can share with us? Please, in my experience, it's about uh, managing expectations. When we're dealing with a specific type of like high achieving introverts, it's about understanding like if people have unrealistic expectations about themselves, about what they can do, what they cannot do, about what they should be doing. And this is based, mainly what I do. It's to help people have less expectations, like be more realistic and with themselves now you're talking about with themselves not with other people with themselves and other people as well like boundaries like because uh, the expectations that other people have of of your time like it will it will just drain you out you will not have time so it's like it's about saying like uh, boundaries saying no and this is part of managing expectations as well okay so it's like okay. The inner game, like I often say to my clients, that uh, time management is not about managing time; it's about managing expectations, mm -hmm. the expectations you have of yourself, and the expectations that other people have on you on your time. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, so that actually, actually, a lot of it is boundaries. Learning how to set boundaries, and if you're saying yes to something, you're saying no to something else, right? Exactly. So, uh, exactly. Yeah. Thank I, you. I, got, I got a question for you, Leonel. Uh, when you're when you're having a team, when you're when you're setting up a team, is it something we should be looking at? Like, as we said, introverts are much more sensitive, caring. They're more thorough, deeper. Um, is this something that we should be looking at to try and bring in introverts? So, so when we do recruiting, when I take on when I'm hiring staff. Is this something I should be asking them? Are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert or not? That's my question. To, to create that harmony, to create that balance in the team. It depends on what kind of, what is the team, like what what kind of job it is and what is the goal of the team. Like if it's like a sales team, perhaps you would like to have more extroverted people. But if it's like to create strategy, Perhaps you wouldn't you want to put some introverts there because of being like uh, more like thinking before acting, being kind of more let's say reasonable with their actions. So it depends, I think, a lot on where you are putting the person in in which kind of team. Okay, thank you. That was that was in. Uh, listen, as we're coming to the end, what I'd like to do as well, we put another sort of like. 10 minutes or eight minutes or something like that i'd like to give each participant who's here one minute or so just to just explain you know just introduce themselves and what you do and why you're here so just three sentences so at least we have an understanding of why we're all here what do you do and so on and then we can close up with uh leonor uh maybe just uh speaking a little bit more about her business, how we can contact her, how we can go a little bit deeper into the topic of uh, introverts, you know, and dealing with introverts and just managing ourselves if we're introverts. So let's just take a minute, maybe Debbie, one minute, just to say who you are, what you do, and why you've come on, maybe. I don't know. Okay, yeah. Um, my name's Debbie Schweitmann. I work out of Germany. I'm a business and uh, life coach. And that's what they use. They use that English word here in German. But in, but if you translate the meaning, it's I'm an executive and life coach. Um, 
and uh, Marshall Goldsmith training, and which means that accountability is a big deal um, about that. And um, I'm here because Gary invited me uh, the first time around, and I've spoken. I've been a guest speaker here before, and I really enjoy the interaction and 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 uh, such, such interesting topics and coming in from from totally unexpected sides to look at things. So that's why I'm here. Thanks, Gary. Great. Thank you, Debbie. Elaine? Okay, so I'm Elaine. Um, I'm very new to this whole coaching um, business. I'm just starting out as a neurodiverse coach. I'm very, um, I've got a big passion for neurodiversity, autism, ADHD, anxiety, especially in children and how they navigate through life. So that is what I'm busy with. I'm publishing a book, um, uh, Neurodiversity, Identifying with a Different Way of Thinking. And I have a passion for Agile as well, because it reminds us to have a flexible mindset. I am here because I know Leonor very well, and she has been a great help for me uh, navigating my introversion. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. David? Uh, my, I'm a servant leadership guy. I do consulting on servant leadership. I make changes and uh, uh, primarily private businesses and increase earnings and stuff like that. But the reason I do what I do is because I like helping people. And that's the main, main reason there. At one time, uh, when I was looking for a job, I saw these engineering manager jobs. I, do I really want to do that? again and the real answer was no and then i read the hbr review on servant leadership i thought that's what i do and so that's why i started my own consulting company and started going that direction and uh, it's simply because i care about people and over here in america you know our politics are all screwed up and i'm fighting for the citizens because most of our politicians are corrupt. So I'm I'm the guy that's going out there and fighting for other people. That's just what I like doing. Thank you. Thank you, David. Stephen? Yes, sir. No, well, thank you, Gary. Thanks for putting on this event. So my passion and call in life is to help those that um, they're the, the sensitive types, the ones that are empathic, the ones that care about changing the world, to help them find their voice, to help them find the skills and the tools to level up to make a difference in the world. And it's also to have that belief in themselves. So I've got the Global Summit Events Community. I'm also an author. I talk about you know moving into this, this space of accepting who you are, moving into this space of personal responsibility and overcoming some of the challenges and traumas that you faced in the past, right? Because if you're sensitive, uh, just like Leonor had, had said, you view that as a, as a negative, but it's actually a superpower. And it's about engaging those superpowers, becoming, you know, activated right instead of just letting the ocean of emotion toss you about it's about using that to have a better life so that's all what i'm about podcaster author group organizer buddy anything to inspire somebody to have a better life so thank you thank you Stephen. uh leonor last words before we close up so yeah i haven't mentioned before i'm based in finland and before i moved to this to be before i started my own business i i was working as a researcher in biochemistry in university and what i understood is even back then i was looking at the big picture of what i was doing and what i was doing it was i was helping people to improve their quality of their life so there is always this drive in me to help other people improve their life quality. But now I do it with, instead of designing drugs, I do it with the life coaching, hypnotherapy. And more recently, I also learned somatic therapy. So I'm using, I'm incorporating some somatic therapy techniques. And what I want is like, my driving force is to end unnecessary suffering. Because when I started my own journey, I started to to see, to look around me, and I saw that people were making their life much harder than it has to be. So, 
And this is why I, I decided to start my own business to put an end on this unnecessary suffering that we cause to ourselves because there is enough suffering already, but we make it even worse for ourselves. So this is my driving force. And you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, you have the my link in the my profile link in the event or lunarcoaching.com. I'm also now starting a second business where I'm going to do uh, corporate training for burnout and overwhelm and also productivity. So it's going to be for now locally in Finland, but let's see how it goes and think because we spend most of our time working. So I think it's very important to start taking addressing these issues there. Leonor, where, where are you in Finland? Where Sorry, do you have a website, Leona? Yeah. Uh, my website, uh, I have lunarcoaching.com. Okay. And soon, later this week, uh, happinessisefficiency.com is my other thing because happier people are more efficient people. And this is what I want to do in the world. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe for the next Be Well, I will try and get the speaker to put all the links and the, the sites, everything in the chat. So we've got it because as we're yes. coming to the end, obviously it's all a bit of, I feel a little bit rushed by this, but. Yes, Debbie, Debbie had something to say. Ah. Yeah, I was asking where you are in Finland. In um, Turku. Yeah, in Tuiko, okay. Yes. Yeah, because I um, have a lot of connections to Finland from my previous company, Nokia. <laughs> oh, okay, yes. <laughs> so, so listen, we're, we're coming to the end. It's coming to the end. So thank you very much, Leonor. I know you're not very well. I hope you, hope you feel better and you get better with your flu. Thanks, thank everyone, you. for coming to the, you know, participating in the Be Well. Uh, next week we've got, uh, hopefully the speaker is Alice Alejandro, Alejandro Bratti, and he's a human strategist. He's going to be talking about consciousness and subconsciousness and so on. So human strategist. Let's see what he says about that. So thank you again. Uh, have a nice day and uh, I hope to see you next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.